Hello, welcome to another episode of Tigers, Tigers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Hull City podcast with me, Luke Flanagan, and Rich Walker is also here, my co-host. How are you, Good evening. Sir? I'm a lot better now. Um, I've been for a run, mm. I've listened to Bad Religion, and I've had a beer. Good band. So, you know... I'm feeling a lot better than I did when I finished work tonight. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a pretty miserable time for everybody currently. So yeah, it is. Yeah, um, <laughs> I is... love not being able to leave the house. The extent of my um, world at the minute is like from my house to Newland Park, <laughs> Brickell <hell>. Avenue back. <laughs> I think I've got to the stage where I think I'm just going to have to start running again as well. Just as well, that's it. That's my it. that's my running route. It's yeah. like it's like round Newland Park and uh, past Northern Cemetery and stuff like that. It's yeah, like this this is the world now. Yeah, it's it. <laughs> at least uh, at least for that half an hour with some good tunes on, you're all right until you yeah, get back yeah. and you're like, oh shit, I've got more work to do. <laughs> So no, maybe maybe you did. I just came in and had a shower and then cracked a beer. So yeah, well I've got instant relief. I have a beer now, so all's good in the world. Uh, yeah, a couple of obviously normal thanks we do on the podcast. Uh, obviously, Danny Johnson and the whole city ladies aren't playing at the minute, but they should resume uh, in a couple of weeks when lockdown. Couple of weeks lifts. all being well. So fingers crossed for that. Um, obviously, check out Fan Hub with hashtag Fans First. They're in our bio, so check them out. And we have uh, our Patreons. Obviously, big thanks to those all the time. Still sticking with us. I'm going to change. We do need to do them some stuff. We are going to do them. <laughs> I've got some ideas. I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. Chris... In the run-up to Christmas, uh, we'll do some stuff. So thank you to the following people. Aaron Bell, Mike Hassan, Alex O'Neill, Adam Brown, Ewan Jones, Danny Nicholl, and Lewis Elliott. So big thanks to all nice you guys. Nice. Thank you very much. We haven't done you much since we've sorted the mugs out and that, so uh, we will sort some stuff out first for you guys. Your donations are appreciated to our, I'd say, lukewarm efforts for things, but, you know, it's just we do the best we can at the minute because it's so shit, isn't it? And this <laughs> is just a good way of having a chat about City and hopefully yeah. you guys enjoy it as well. So good way of it getting getting rid of a, a few frustrations and having to try and have a, a laugh that we would normally have at city but we can't so yeah. yeah um i think we should on that note we should do our normal shit sandwich <laughs> and uh we should start with the good um obviously okay. we've got a couple of games to talk about haven't we mm-hmm. um and who have you decided to talk about or what have you decided to talk about for your for our good well, my good is um, Hakiba Delican. Oh, good one. Which I thought was uh, maybe slightly out of left field because he doesn't seem to have ended up being the story of the week. I think uh, um, for it wasn't brilliant against Harrogate, but I certainly did think he played very well against Grimsby. Uh, not no, Harrogate. he was. He, yeah, he played he very well against, against Harrogate. You're yeah. right, and, and we threw in some slight shade, didn't we, last week? A little bit. I don't think it was too bad. I just no, think we, I, mean, we... I thought we expected more of him and he wasn't quite at that level. But I yeah. think particularly against Grimsby, he was excellent. Well, I thought he made a big difference against um, Burton Albion as well. Yeah. He was, very, he was very bright coming on. Yeah. And his, his goal was, was excellent. It was a brilliant finish. Oh, yeah, it was. One of those that the keeper probably looks back at and mm. thinks, you know, there's a slight case of lettuce wrists for him. Potentially, um, but I think the way he hit it, you expected it to go top corner and it went just lift, no back yeah. lift, right in the bottom corner. Yeah, he was maybe caught out slightly, but, yeah. you know. I think he gave him the yeah. eyes and did it. <laughs> yeah, from 20-odd 20, 20 yards. <laughs> I'm going to go in the top bins. No, I'm not. I'm going to beat it bottom. How would you like them apples? Go on. Uh, that, those must have been some convincing eyes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, we're looking at the positive. So mm. from our point of view, it's, it was a, a really, really good goal. Mm. The only thing with praising a delicate for his performance against Burton Albion is that you have to slightly acknowledge the fact that James Scott and Thomas Meyer uh, first half were not good. No. Um, it was a big opportunity for the pair of them. Mm. Um, Meyer especially, I, I felt, could have 
probably counted himself slightly lucky to be starting after the way that his um, his game against Harrogate was was perceived by a lot of people. Potentially. I thought he had an all right game mm. um, at Harrogate. He's just his final ball, wasn't there? Yeah, I'd agree with but that. He got he got his start and didn't do an awful lot with it, and neither did James Scott in that first forty five minutes. So the only forty five minutes that they had against Burton. Have you kind of um, gone onto your bad already? No, no, not yet. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, saying right, that, okay. that that to acknowledge the positive thing about Adelican, you have to All say right. that he came on and made a difference in a game. Oh, he did, yeah. Where he did. we we were struggling to create from wide areas, mm. um, and then he carried that into the Grimsby game, which for all that I belly ached about the. Um, Mickey Mouse qualities of uh, the Papa John's trophy. Mm. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that game against Grimsby and, and Adela Kentucky's his, you know, obviously a lot of confidence from the goal that he scored against yeah. Burton into that game and I thought oh, it was they, a great game. He was ragging them all over, mate. It was great to Particularly watch. Particularly first half. Yeah, he was, was, especially he was for that really second good. goal. Um, yeah. He was just I mean, like, I know, you can't get the ball off him, mate. Like, don't yeah, even bother. It was a, it was a brilliant run, and I felt I felt for him a little bit that Samuelson. It looked at first viewing like he might have nicked it off him, but I think it wasn't actually going. No, in I don't think it Sam, was. Samuelson... It, it looked like it was going to just miss. I think I didn't know if it did. Yeah, David Nugent did him, but um... no, I, that's what I thought at first. But mm. he, he, I think I it was think a necessary I th- touch. I think he needed to get that touch. Yeah, but I mean, Adelica made great use of the space that was afforded by Grimsby's system. I think was it Max Wright they were playing at right wing back. Yeah, yeah, and I had a message from somebody actually um, before the game kicked off, saying um, he used to play for Scarborough. Apparently, Max Wright, and this guy was a right. Scarborough fan, and he said, "Oh, he'll uh, he'll rip you right back to shreds." And I I reserved judgment. And the first minute, Max Wright went up and nearly got in and had a shot. I thought, "Oh, he looks tasty." Um, mm. And then it on was it, across was it him at right wing back then? Well, he was he was playing right. He was playing on the right, but they they played a weird yeah. system. But yeah, he did get yeah, up the, and down. But he got in there. McLaughlin the, came across and timed it up, and then he didn't do anything else. I was just like, I don't know what no. you were talking about, ripping us apart. Never even got a touch. <laughs> but I mean, I listened to Humberside after the game, and Ian Holloway was you know particularly critical of his team. And but it makes a change so, actually listening to a, a manager saying, "Well, they deserved it, and we were fucking shit." Yeah, well. It, it does for us. It maybe doesn't for Grimsby Town fans. Maybe, but, you know, maybe. Who cares? I don't care. Who no. cares what they feel? No, um, not at all. Well, there's only about four thousand so yeah. of them anyway, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, a delicate. I thought was uh, across the two games that he's played this week. I thought he was he was good value for his place in the team. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And if um, if McCann is to be believed, and and Lewis Potter is struggling mm. to to. You know, being contention for the game against Milton Keynes and and then um, Ipswich in in the week. Mm. You know, he, he need look no further than a, a delicate on that form, but that is the trouble. I think he's that... he's certainly um, he's had a sort of stop start beginning to that's his career. It. That's 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 what I was going to say. Yeah. He, he just seems. But he's he seems now fit in the right vein of form. I think isn't he? he's he's do, he's done well in the last couple of games, so hopefully he'll take that. It's whether it consists. It's whether he can sustain it. That's that's what yeah. I'm looking for. He just needs to to find that consistency in his game, and hopefully he'll, he'll start here. Um, he's got a couple of goals now this season. I think that'll do him his confidence a lot of good because he hadn't scored yeah, for like two know, years previously to the Plymouth yeah, goal, had he? Because of injury and whatever. A couple of goals and that that handy assist at Northampton as well. So yeah. he's making a valuable contribution. Yeah, all the same, I, I'm know, happy even, with him with that inconsistency because you were always going to be like he's going to take a while to bed into the squad and everything, you know. So. I, I again, again, I see why you picked him. I particularly did like his goal against Burton. Um, mm-hmm. Every time somebody had shot from distance, it kind of ballooned over the bar, and I was expecting the same kind oh, of thing. I know. There, there was some, there were some, some whoppers there, there, weren't there? James Scott had a chance. Oh, at first half, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good ball to play him in from Maya. To be fair to him. And I think Greaves had a couple of chances, didn't he? Yeah. Him and had an effort that was saved, yeah. tipped over the bar. Yeah, there was a good a good save, that, to be fair. Their keeper was their yeah. man of the match by far. I thought it was quite. I thought yeah, it was that's... really good, apart from the last goal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if well, I, yeah, your your good is Hakeem Bedelica. Mine's mine's Malik hmm. Wilkes, but particularly Malik Wilkes okay. on the right. Yeah, I was interested when you said that actually. 
but go on. I'll let I'll let you I'll let you state your case for, for why specifically on the right. I just think I, I, Wilkes has had games where he's played through the middle and he's looked really good, but I think he gives mm-hmm. his more consistent kind of performances when he's either out. I should have said out wide, really, because when you know this is. I want to talk about first half for a second. When he um, he was very dangerous first 20 minutes was Wilkes through the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, he got their lad booked after eight minutes and the same lad stupidly pulled him back. And like, <laughs> I, I mean, that was idiotic. What he was thinking. They, they were two of the most fuckwitted yellow cards they were, and I, <laughs> you will ever see. Oh my God. Do you know what? <laughs> I mean, the first one was, was bad and yeah. then the second one, it was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I, if I could find it, I'd go through and, and read this tweet to you because, again, I know you, you'll probably dip out in and out of social media so you won't see things pop up the same. Yeah, I've not been on a lot this but, week other than to post a picture of the massive rat that my cat I did today. see that. That was fucking huge. <laughs> um, fair play to where... Uh, Fair play to him. He's, he's, he's doing his job. He is, yeah. He's doing his you don't job. want it in the house, do you? So, no, unless he exactly. brings it in. But yeah. No, um, he didn't. He just le- left it laid out in the garden. Good lad. <laughs> it was like, my sister said he was like an American dentist who'd gone on a hunting spree in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> good one. That, that was his endangered species. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was saying now. Uh, Sorry, yeah, it's all right. Waffling. Well, we know it's twelve point of a podcast waffling. Oh yeah, so I was going to talk about the Twitter thing. So anyway, at, at half time, so it's so obviously I'm at the Burton game, and then um, I put that at half time, City nil nil, um, and that you know they they're struggling to break down the ten men because there was a moment of madness from Sam Hughes getting to mm-hmm. yeah, well two moments of madness because Wilkes was going nowhere really for the first one he upended him. Um, and then obviously he's pulled him back, and some Burton fan tweeted me back. I didn't even know Burton fans existed, and a bit like the a bit like the Yeti, you know. I've never seen one oh, in real life. On, don't, be, don't be like that. Don't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a Burton fan? I've never spoke to one. No, but no, only I've never spoken to one, definitely, but only at the games. But you know, <laughs> but yeah, probably a lot of people would go through life and not spot a city fan. Maybe I don't know, but anyway, yeah, he tweeted me and said, "You know what he said? This was the hilarious thing: the uh, the EFL haters, if it had been <laughs> no, 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 it's, oh no, it's not finished. Right, the EFL haters, the FA haters, and if it had been your centre back, he'd still have been on the pitch. Ah, uh, brilliant." And I said, I said, might I said, be, the, might be slightly overstating the, it. You know, the, the FA I, hate I, I would, you. I would very much doubt that Burton elicit that depth of emotion from any neutral party. I'd, I'd agree with that. Somebody else underneath, I think it was Ant Northgraves who listened to this show. He said, "The FA hate you. Don't you trade at St George's Park?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what do they do in those changing rooms to make the FA hate them? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, Burton have left a box in a right state again. Let's get their centre back up. <laughs> it was ref in that game today. Get the word out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, didn't flush it. Didn't... Send him off. <laughs> Had to get the coat hanger out again. <laughs> fuming like F- head of FA fuming. <laughs> get Sammy who's off. Get him off. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, when Wilkes was through the middle, obviously it's causing problems there. But I think we missed him out wide after they went down to ten. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And yeah, when I think that's and fair. when they they brought Eves on and sent him out wide, he looked dangerous again. You know. Mm. So yeah, well, that's why I was interested to hear what he had to say because I thought he looked very sharp early doors. Mm, he did, and he was causing a lot of a lot of problems for them through the middle um, and I know we've said previously that we prefer him wide than, than through the middle mm. um, I think the only thing that he did wrong when he was playing through the middle on Saturday was he had an opportunity to play James Scott in for the, a relatively easy chance I think one on one with the keeper mm. and he shot and, and it went wide or over something he missed anyway yeah, when he should have played Scott yeah. in uh, that was the only thing that he did wrong for me, but otherwise he looked like a threat. Mm. I thought so. I was interested to hear your reasoning, but I think I think you made a sound case for it. I just think it was yeah we we missed the creativity because I did think that Maya and Scott were quite poor that first half. Um, yeah, there were flashes here and there, but there was that chance Scott had sort of 
40 minutes in, put through by mm-hmm. Meyer, and you're just like, yes, this is it. And he blazes over the bar, and you're just like, this is not his, this yeah. is not his day. Um, I do think Scott did pretty well when he came on against Scrimsby and scored a worldy goal. But his goal was fantastic. It, it really was. It? But that's that, that's the inconsistency with him that irks me a little bit. But still, I'm talking about mm. Wilkes. He's young. He is young. Um, and he's, I mean, he's been injured most of the time he's been at City. So, um, yeah, you can't take too much, you know. Yeah, I don't want to be too negative on him or anything. But I did think when, particularly at the, the balance Wilk showed for his goal also, because I could see him oh, blazing, blazing that over the bar. He's definitely worked yeah. on his finishing. Because I think last year that's over the bar. Um, and it, it took, what, 60 odd minutes to break a very stubborn defence down. And that was it was crucial yeah. I mean, timing there. We, they get to seventy minutes and it's nil nil. They may nick one. Yeah, yeah. You could you could see us getting a little bit frustrated. I mean, it was our our own um, profligacy as well mm. that I think led to led to them being still in the game at that point. Because like we said, we had chances. Mm-hmm. We could have put them away, but it was a big goal. It was a big goal in a big moment of the game. Yeah, and you saw what it meant to us. You, everyone just. Yeah, the celebration said it all. Really, everyone's just thought, you know, you punch in the air and just like get in. There we go. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. It was, it was like breaking that. Was yeah. Um, and obviously their heads went down a little bit after that. They never, they had a free kick that was quite close. Um, maybe, yes, it was, maybe yeah. on another day that goes in, but you know, they didn't really threaten because I mean. Quinny was very quiet for them, thankfully, because I do love... Yeah, he went off early He was knackered. He was absolutely knackered. Mm. They're, they're blo- That's his style, yeah, though, their manager said himself it, into the Their floor. manager's a player, actually, um, because they got rid of their management team, didn't they? Um, mm-hmm. Before the game, like two or three days before the game, they're in a right state. I, uh, I don't know if it was their management team, was it? It was the, the, a lot of their backroom staff, but not the manager. Well, I think the, the backroom staff left to join Nigel Clough. But yeah, that was my... I can't believe that... I can't believe that neither of us have picked um, Samuelson. Maybe we both overlooked I, him because we felt like he was the obvious I choice. I actually wanted to talk about him in A or B. Um, okay, do. If that's all right. So we'll come to that. We're yeah. not. Even, people might be saying he scored two goals, yeah. could have had a hat trick, and you haven't mentioned him. Yeah. We will. We're getting on to yeah, it. Yeah, we are. We will get on to Patience Samuelson. Grasshopper. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you we want to, we've talked about the good. Uh, and do you want to go with your bad? And we'll, we'll uh, talk about that. Yeah, um, I was going to talk about James Scott and Thomas Meyer as my bad, mm. um, but I felt like that would have been harsh on them. Had I picked them for for the for my bad this week, I would have been ignoring the contribution that they made in the last half hour against, against Grimsby. I thought they were both really They were, actually. Really good and I will on. say, as soon as Maya came on, he was, like, bit between his teeth. He had, he he had meant, a point to prove then. He meant business, he did. didn't he? You could see he, it. He wanted um, that penalty as well. He would have been fuming. Yeah, yeah. He went, he went and grabbed it immediately, he did. didn't he? Like, no, absolutely no you don't take thought for the fact that Samuelson was on a hat, was trick. On a hat I know, trick. But in retrospect, yeah. would you rather him taking it? I think I would, because that was a very shit penalty. <laughs> In, in there was nothing on it. No, was it was I think a... you have to give him a chance to, to finish his hatch. You do, um, you do, but you could. I mean, how pissed off would you be if you were mayor? You'd be fuming, wouldn't you? Um, but then, then again, yeah, he'll get then again, it. maybe he didn't really earn the right with all his bad performances so far to take a penalty. Because if he then does, no. then he, he does blaze it over the bar, say, and then everyone's says, Sam, Why didn't Samuelson take it? It just causes stupid yeah. little, little rifts and stuff. I think it's. Should be down to the captain there to just say right, which he did anyway. To be fair, just give him the give yeah. him the ball. But I think it was James Scott as well, wasn't it? Yeah, he was Scott, was, Scott was pointing, he was, he was pointing out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but I thought they were both really really positive and you know earned themselves some a slice of redemption. Mm. Really, all right. It was only Grimsby and the the difference in the teams. It looked like it was more than just one league. I thought they were very poor. Um, they had about they had they like were, one ta- one chance in the first half where he got kind of brought it down and then skied it over the bar. That yeah, and I think they had one that flashed across goal. Yeah, and kind of ended up at the back they, post they, that could have been. We just outpassed them. I've never seen us play such good football. Really, it was. Re- I re- I really really enjoyed the game. I did. I really enjoyed I did. it. You know, for like I say, I don't want to talk anymore about what I think of the competition. I'd had my little mm. little 
rant last week about it, but for all that, I still enjoyed the game. It was it was just entertaining football. Mm. Um, I, think, I think one thing so, that uh, has annoyed me about the Papa John's trophy already is that right, we're at home to crew. And I mean, you yeah. look at on social media, you thought we'd have won it already, saying, oh, that's an easy drive. It's like, are you joking? Crew, crew just beat fucking Peterborough 2 0. And they were very difficult yeah, to beat at home. I don't know why people are celebrating the fact we've got fucking crew, because they're a, a tough nut to crack. <laughs> with. But yeah. anyway, that's for yeah, another you know, that's thing. for another day. They were one of the best teams we played at yeah. home, so I don't know what people are chatting. Whether maybe people don't just watch games or something, I don't know. But anyway, I don't know. It's easy to be dismissive of a, a team like Crew, I guess, isn't potentially it? You know, in some fashion. I mean, it's I'd rather play a real um, team than an under twenty ones team. I will say that. But exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you know it's certainly rather have them than. The... I'd definitely rather have them than than Wolves and oh yeah, because they've got thirty million. 16, 17 year old in the squad. So just anyway, regardless of who's in the squad, I don't care. I don't want a, your first team to play another. Under, yeah, I mean, it's, another team's under twenty ones. I mean, how won't be coming? We said it that? before, but it stinks a B league, doesn't it? So we don't want any of that shite. We want yeah. proper teams. At yeah. least we've got a proper team. So, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, particularly so, with with um, anyway, Maya, I, Maya, I was really disappointed with him because he, he started, like he said, I think he was lucky to start against Burton mm-hmm. and he didn't really grasp the chance did he no and he, he's another one of those players that you want to do well I always I, I don't know maybe it's like the 1990s Eurosport viewer in me um, but I always want like random players from Europe to, that join your team to do yeah. well you know? yeah like a left field <laughs> we've had a few of them. and you just think yes come yeah, on we've make, had a few of them down the years. Legend, lad. come on yeah, like when um, Pusic came yeah. in and Tijani Bellade, you're thinking, like, I would love you to be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'm kind of there with Thomas Meyer already. Yeah. Well, he, um, he mid so well in his first start, created that awful, uh, amazing cross, sorry, for Wilkes' header against Crew. And yeah. you just thought, here we go. He did, but what you good. have to think is, he's, he's probably finding his way in the league. I mean, I know for a fact that Meyer's family aren't here with him really? yet. There's um, a COVID yeah, and everything. Yeah, so... Yeah, it, it probably t- you know it's it's probably a lot to sort out and move from another country in normal times, mm. uh, especially when as as Maya has been, you thrust straight into it. Yeah, I mean, I, so maybe don't... people don't kind of think of that side of it. I mean, it, I mean, it'd be well, difficult. George Honeyman's on the club's website today talking about how much being settled in the area has had an effect on his form. Well, you can this tell year. How, how how happy he is on the pitch, the way he's performing, because he's our. Number yeah. like his first name on the team sheet for me, on him, on yeah. him, on his well, name, because he's been brilliant. Exactly. So we forget that they're they're people and they've got other situations going on that can have an effect. Mm. On I mean, the the I mean, humans, human beings. At the end of the day, you get, yeah. I think people get kind of drawn up in the fact that oh, the footballers they earn loads of money. They should do this. They should do that. And it's like you could earn as much as you want, but if your head's not right your performances are not going to be good and then it's going yeah. to affect you, that's, isn't it? That's why professional sports teams all over the world invest so much in psychologists yeah. and you know performance coaches and stuff like that because these intangibles can make a difference in, in the way that you play. Yeah. And that's, that's proven. I mean, all of that is a long preamble to say that I did not want to pick Maya and uh, Scott as my badge because I felt like they'd, they'd redeemed themselves slightly with, with their group. I think it would be fair to say so their, have... their performance against Burton is their bad. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, yeah. you know, I don't really want to touch on that because I feel like it's sort of balanced yeah. out. Um, my bad, and it's, you know, it's a subjective one. All football fans would talk about it and referees and what oh. have you. But my Oof. bad was the referee against Burton, Burton Albion. <laughs> he was poor, he was wasn't he? <laughs> dog shit. And we're talking about the official. Dog yeah. Todd. <laughs> talking about the official. Yeah, dog Todd's probably the right word. <laughs> uh, there were two, I thought, two penalties that he could have mm. given us. Oh. Um, that he, for some reason, had absolutely no interest. Mate, that and Delica um, is not a dive, I'm telling you now. To be fair to him, on first viewing, and this is maybe the hole in picking him as a bad, on first viewing, I thought he might have got that right. I don't, but the it, more it, you watch it... I, I watched and, it again And again, afterwards. I'm not a fan of using replays as, as a stick to beat referees with, but it's like, how has he got that I never, so I wrong? never thought. I saw, it with, I saw it in real time, and I was like, 
that was not a dive. It was not a dive at all. And then when I've looked at it again, like you say, you can't do that on there in League One, can you? Because there's no VAR and all that shit. But he definitely got it wrong. And the one that he, I can't... But, I mean, you could even forgive him for going, oh, maybe it did look like that from his angle. How would you get the eaves one wrong? I have no How idea. fucking rugby tackled I... the fucker? Yeah. I mean, it was the most blatant. Was, that could I have mean, been not... another red card because he would have been through. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to give another red yeah, card and just told him to get up. But I thought, fuck me, how has he got that wrong? Like, it yeah. could clear as day. Just... It... <laughs> It was a, a reminder of everything that used to grind our gears, like going back 15, 16 years ago. With referees at the oh. standard, you're just like, oh, but not just him, mate. The, what's the liner doing? The, they only, only rarely get involved. But usually they're, they're waving um, the flags I, all over the shop. Proper flag happy fuckers. Like they should work for the railways or summer. Just like. <laughs> like on, on a Royal yeah. Navy ship like doing yeah. semaphore or something but you've got um, to help your team out I have a theory about assistant referees that they only get involved when they want to fuck you up um, so Jesus. <laughs> like that's why they didn't bother <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but that's the, the thing those two decisions alright referees get penalty decisions yeah, wrong well, it's, it's good the way they the get time. it wrong with VAR so it's fact. Yeah, yeah. So it happens. So you kind of you're kind of willing to cut him a little bit of slack with those. The one that really got me, um, and I can't remember which of our players it was on, but I think it was the aptly named John oh, Joe Tool. Respect. Fuck me. Why is he the not elbow? Gone for that? That, yeah, respect. That was horrible. It. Yeah, I said at the I time. Mean, I don't. You. Right. You won't. You, well, I thought it was a red card at the time. You won't have heard it before the game. Um, Burnsy was saying that he thinks that City centre back pairing of Greaves and, and Burke is too good looking to be centre back. <laughs> um, really? But after after um, after Burke had his Smashed nose smashed up his um, face, yeah, bloodied. yeah. How that was not a red card, I don't know because you can see it on the replay as well. I mean, I saw it first time, but you can see it on the replay. O'Toole. Who has always been a, a shit house bastard for my money? Yeah, for my money. Yeah, like playing for Watford and Colchester, I've never liked him. Um, you know, maybe they didn't go far enough with his surname. I'm not sure that, that it's not. Tool yeah, it's been son of Tool in Ireland, but he's an actual Tool. <laughs> yeah, he is the original, <laughs> the original and worst. Um, but you can see he has oh, a yeah. look round. It was calculated. So he, he knows. He he's perfectly aware of what is mm. what is around him, and and he'd only just come know, on as well. He'd there come is a on degree of extra defender when um, Sam Hughes had been sent off, so he wanted yeah. to make his mark, yeah. didn't he? He was like, "Fuck this! We shouldn't have had a man sent off. I'm going to elbow one of them cunts." That's but what it was. He, he he played the rest of the game in yeah. that fashion as well. Yeah, like weird, weirdly chippy. I mean, I know that's his style. I've, I've seen him play before, and. He, that's that's obviously how he gets his kicks. He's like the lead catamol um, of League but One. Th- but although he's done playing the same, yeah, not not the same position, but still just like an horrible fucker. And you just like absolutely yeah. no no effort to win the ball at all. Well, there wasn't. I mean, I know he's jumped for it and, and he might have an argument say, well, you've got to jump with your arms. It's like, yeah, but you don't jump with your arms swinging around and smashing it in his face. He definitely meant face. that. I thought... They could have gone down yeah. to nine there, and and really they should have done. Um, I think the prob at that point they're probably lucky that we've gone on to win the game because that could have been made more yeah. of you know the fact that we've been denied two penalties and and they should have been down yeah. to nine. It was a horrendous yeah, it really decision, was. and it's it's the type of thing that you will often see labelled as a challenge, but it wasn't a challenge. He's just gone it's a war crime of a challenge. And, huh? uh, yeah, he's been allowed to get away with it. I was worried so, for, Bert, for that reason because he... he was down for a long time, and I thought, "Well, fucking hell, yeah, I he was... we've just got our best centre back pairing sorted, and now he's gone down. I don't want another Louis Coyle situation yeah. where he's out for another three weeks." It looked a particularly nasty it did. one. Didn't yeah, it? I wasn't um, wasn't a was, fan. I was glad to see yeah, him come back too. on. Uh, but yeah, for that reason, the the referee on Saturday. Fair was enough. Bad. Uh, I've gone a little bit different with my bad. Um, Okay. Mine is the negativity surrounding Tom Eaves. Um, I'll be the first to admit, I don't think Eaves has had an excellent start to the season. Um, I think 
he's had a lot of chances in front of goal and he's taken one of them and scored against Bristol. Um, he had a one-on-one chance at Burton and I think if he's got more confidence, oh, he puts God. that away. I don't know. I mean, again, every... do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what cost him in that time? time? <laughs> it's his second. No, it's his second touch. His second touch takes him away from goal. I think his second touch is with his right foot, and it kind of takes yes. him away and narrows yeah, his possibly. angle down. And at that point, he's always he's always struggling. Um, it was just so heavy, and it kind of altered mm. the path of his run. Where really he wanted to be kind of bearing down straight on goal and giving himself as much of it mm. to aim for but he took him away narrowed his own angle made the keeper's job a yeah. lot easier and I mean again the keeper did have a good game so you know but I do think he should be scoring there I don't, and I felt for him mm-hmm. I, I'd agree with you I really yeah. feel for Tom Eaves and do you know what I mean I don't know if you saw it at the end Grant McCann came onto the pitch at the end and made a beeline for Tom Eaves and gave him like this sort of Mm-hmm. prep talk where he was looking at him and said, don't look around everyone, look at me. You should have scored there, but keep your head up because the, the, these things will come. Like, And he slapped him, well, he sort you know of tapped him on the, about? on the side of the, the face, like, keep your chin up. Like, don't look at People are going to probably slag it now. Forget them. Fuck them. Mm. Don't worry about what they say. And I thought that was really good management. Well, I think <clears throat> it was, but I mean, it's it's important that that miss is put into the context of his performance in that 45 minutes because I thought he I made did. an impact. I think the way we were missing somebody, Malik Wills doesn't hold the ball up. We missed Josh McGuinness for that role. And I thought Eves did, mm-hmm. not as well as McGuinness certainly, because I do think he's the better striker to play in that role, as we've said before. But I do think, I don't think Eves had a bad game. I thought certainly he changed the way we played and allowed Wilts to be more creative. And I do think... It, Gave us a bit yeah, of a focal point, he? did point, hold it he? up, he laid it off. He did what he should have been doing. It would have been great. If, the, the, see, these fine margins, if he'd have scored, everyone would be going, oh, well, Eves is on fire now. You know, it's just that those little yeah. things. And the thing yeah. that annoys me more, I think, was the... And I shouldn't let it sort of annoy me, but it's particularly the stuff online where people are saying, you know, he's not good enough, he's too good. Uh, non-league's too good for him and you know where you just see the slagging players and you're just like mate have a fucking day off leave the cunt alone like he started the season got injured against his old club after half an hour he's come back six seven games later he's not going to be up to full fitness he has scored one goal he's, he's he fucking tries his heart out yeah he does stupid fouls and he gets but he's born offside half the time but just fucking cut him a bit <laughs> sl- just fucking get behind him stop slagging him I can't stand it when I see this. We, loads of them were like saying Eve's has to be Eve's contract has to be terminated now. And you just like, I mean, I, I can't imagine if you're a footballer, you go through and read those message boards. But I know when we've talked to players before, they have done because it was who was it? Greeny was talking about Damien, Damien Delaney, Delaney having the right time about it, wasn't it? And he said he used to because Stuart yeah. Green had said at the time when he told us when we spoke to him, didn't he? You shouldn't be going on there. You shouldn't be seeing. You should be focusing on your own game. And I'm sure that, you know, the way that they set up on social media, the Twitter is not that active for each player, is it? They, they obviously go on at different times, but they won't read. They won't be part of fucking stupid message boards and and all the um, fans' forums and stuff. Because, I mean, there's some good that comes out of those things, but some of the stuff on there is just idiotic. And you're just like, why are you saying stuff like that? Are you even City fans? Like... Do you know what I think a lot of it is? It's probably the fact that that's your outlet of um, at the moment uh, being able to communicate with other fans. Whereas you would just get if you're in the stadium, just, yeah, yeah, you shout it and it's it's off your I, chest I immediately. That. I understand but that argument. If 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 you're not and you you like like many of us are, we're watching the games on mm. our own at the minute. You're on your phone and it's just like every thought and uh, it just and, uh, comes out. I, so there's maybe an element is, of that. And, it, and if people say stuff in the heat at the moment at football and then they'd probably say, oh, I shouldn't have said that earlier on. But when you've posted it and then there's 100 comments underneath, all agreeing with you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it just, it, it's, it's the negativity yeah. around it that winds me up. He's, he's having a tough enough time as a striker. I want him to do well. I want every City player to do well. I don't dislike any City player. And it's, it's a very difficult time for him because when he has had his chance, he hasn't really made the most of it. Harrogate springs to mind there. He did all right when he came on at Bristol. Obviously, he's got his goal. He's got that monkey off his back, so to speak. But the other thing is, he's he's had chances and he's not taken them. And the more you don't, the more you don't score, the harder it becomes to like break that 
sort of duck, doesn't it? And I, f- I really feel for him. Yeah. I like Tom Eaves as a guy. I think he's really funny. I think he's a good lad. And when when I've seen interviews with him, he's clearly like he's articulate. He knows the game. He's he's funny. You know, he's he's not just like a you know monotonous kind of. I don't want to be here. But he's got. He actually gives his time up and speaks really well. And I just think the way that some City fans are carrying off, you'd think that we were bottom of the league and he'd not. You know, I. It's like sometimes it reminds me of the stuff that I know, we used to hear, like I, as young as I was, like under Hately and stuff. I remember speaking to people later on when when I was a bit older, and they were just saying I was those those were dark days, you know, when we were in ninety seven, that and we didn't have any. We had Hately playing, and the amount of vitriol that was aimed at him, and then it was fish out and all of that sort of stuff. It's getting to the stage where every other post I see on social media is how shit is Tom Eaves. And it's just like, fuck it. it I just applaud <laughs> anyone who's listening. Fucking call it out. Don't, fuck, don't fucking do it. Stop it. Leave Tom Eves alone. This is really yeah, good. Leave your Tom wind, Eves alone. I, in the past, I've said things about him. Leave Britney Spears alone. <laughs> Britney Spears. <laughs> I mean, in... I love the passion for it, mate. I mean, people forget. All right, his record was one thing, but it was a free transfer yeah. from Gillingham. He was a free transfer from Gillingham. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, what do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? Um, I mean, like you say, I thought he had an impact against Burton, and I thought you know what? if we, if we, the, the minutes you know, the he got against the first, the minutes he got against Grimsby, Grimsby were goal. good. I thought it was. I thought it was good. Goal. Doesn't happen without him. But he doesn't get the assist because it was no. uh, Slater who, who does it off. But he was the one who held it down and nodded it on. He was, but he was doing that particularly first half. He was he was mm. crucial to us. You know, he was. He, I thought he'd linked up play well. It's one twos he with a delicate and held stuff. it up to, it doing really to good effect. Yeah, mm. he had a very I just good think game. sometimes um, people are watching a different game. But then he mate. can't win. He can't. The thing is, when you have a good game and and against the League Two side in a cup competition, and you're a mm. player that's struggling, is that people will never then take that at face value and say he's had yep. a good game there. Let's so, see oh, well, he should be doing it because they're to shit. the next one. What? Yeah, exactly, exactly. They'll they'll say they're a League Two yep. team and they were yep. crap. So if he doesn't show it against them, yeah. will he really show they, it against? Yeah, and I understand that as well. I do mm. understand that. Mm. Um, but perhaps you should just take it in isolation and say he had a good yeah. game there. Yeah. His season's Absolutely, still young, yeah. isn't it? You know, he's, he's still not getting up to full sharpness. So um, let's see where he's at in February. You know, when he's got five or six goals, hopefully. I am putting a lot of faith in him, but it would, it, you know, f- yeah, February, February might be generous. I still think it's an area that I'd we agree need with to you strengthen. There. I'm not, I'm um, not disagreeing that we we don't need I, more options up top. So I think we do, but I, I think we're not terrible going forward. There are strikers, you know, like Wilts can play through the middle, like we've said before, but it just doesn't suit the way McCann plays a lot of the time. I don't think, unless we're playing really counter-attacking no. football, like we did against Leeds. No, you're... But still, um, yeah. Those are our good and bad. We are going to do our numbers before previewing the next couple of games then. Yeah. Uh, and then any You should be... go first because my numbers links into the preview. What is it? It does. Okay. okay. Well, I picked... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I picked uh, number 38. Okay, what is this? Um, it is a uh, reference to our captain, midfielder, Honey Esther. Um, he's won more tackles. Captain? He's been captain when Smallwood's not been there. I'll say vice oh. captain. Okay. Vice captain. Um, he's made more tackles than any other League One player this year. 38 tackles. In okay. what, what, 11, 12 games. There was a couple of other stats alongside that. I know you love, love some City stats at the same time. Yeah. 30 key passes this season so far. And also five assists, and he's rated second for that. So five five league one assists for Tigers this this year. And, yeah, 38 tackles, one more tackles than any other player in the league. 
Um, good, good and, lad. And obviously, we didn't. Uh, we saw George Honeyman against Burton. We didn't see him against Grimsby because there were eleven changes quite wisely yeah. from McCann. Um, I will say that <laughs> I didn't want. Yes. I wanted to see the, uh, the the fringe players, shall we call them, or the younger players. I wanted to see them there because we need to make sure we actually do protect the squad with the amount of games yeah, that we play. Particularly with Honeyman on a booking and big games coming up. Yes, precisely. I mean, same with Elder, really. And, you know, Emmanuel, you want to try and get Louis Coyle in there where you can now he's fit again, don't you? Yeah. Um, do. But I just. He had a very good game on, on Tuesday night as well. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, but I just thought it was worth a good mention. I, I saw the stat. Um, if anyone's interested in looking at the account for the uh, stats for in League One, there's playmaker underscore en. Loads of good stats for League One. So have a check out of that. that. Um, it's not obviously it's not just City, but that was one of the ones that came to my attention today. Um, and there's a picture, flattering. Well, I don't think it's necessarily a flattering picture of uh, Honeyman, but he's in he his. Looks lovely. <laughs> he's got his his hair all over the place, pet. And uh, <laughs> it just says underneath it just says honey monster. <laughs> so I appreciate uh, that also. Yeah. Um but Is yeah Kevin Keegan with him. <laughs> with the air like that it should be. I'd love it if we beat them. <laughs> love it. Uh, that was a good advert, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was excellent. Honey Monster and Kevin Keegan. Yes. Good good times. Um <laughs> good times with good times. <laughs> Smelling like piss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, not, yeah. Not a good they, they do smell awful, to be fair. But anyway, yeah. Um obviously I thought <laughs> I did think Honeyman was uh was very good against Burton as well. Um the amount of energy he puts in and we did mention him earlier, didn't we, about him now he's been settled in the in the area. He feels like he can be a more I don't know, his focus is more on the games than trying to get settled and he feels like he's at home here now. It's his second season. Yeah, he said as much last season. He said he was yeah, all over the yeah. Head. Ed's a shed probably because he, yeah, he, he moved from his boyhood club and it's difficult. He said because you're in a hotel all the time and it's like mm. people might think, oh, you're going out for tea every night. That sounds great. And he said it's not because some nights and we all know this. Some nights you just want to puff yourself something and chill out on the sofa and you can't do. do that. Of course you do. He yeah. said every. Every day off he had, he was going back up to the northeast, and it's like he probably didn't help himself all that much. No, so this maybe year he's trying to get, like he's, yeah, he's settled yeah. and he's part of the part of the, the fabric of the club now. So I do think he's... um the same could kind of be said for why Marcus Madison didn't settle. I know he's a completely different character altogether, but he was living a similar lifestyle, and it can't be easy. You feel like a bit of a nomad, really, don't you? If you're constantly in so. hotels and Going up and down from different him. areas. I know I he's back in League One him. now, isn't he? He's signed yeah, for Charlton. Charlton. Yeah. Um, it all seems like a, a bad dream. Yeah, it does a little bit, doesn't it, really? Um, but anyway, yeah, that was my number, 38. Okay. okay. And yours? Well, my number is four. Mm-hmm. Um, and four applies to several things this week. Ooh, it's a, it's a uh, multifaceted number. Yeah, multifaceted. So... Um, if we deal with ourselves first without looking forward to uh, the next few games yep. um, four is the number of games that we have won in all competitions without conceding good um, on nice the spin. start yep um, yeah 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 true yeah good shout so you know back to clean sheets again um, Matt another one for, George. yeah another one for George Long another Please one yeah yeah um, I was going to see when when the last time George kept is it three clean sheets he's got now or yeah uh, he, what, he played against um, it's, it's only two isn't it it's only it's two. only two it is only two because he didn't play against Harry, Harrogate yeah. because he was um, self isolating wasn't he yeah that's right yeah. so does that four games have won on the spin in all competitions and not conceded a goal mm-hmm. um, which is another pattern emerging you know with, with, with... solid defence it's all to do with Burke and Greaves <laughs> <laughs> it could be they looked very settled again didn't they yeah um, right, they didn't have an awful lot to do um, but there was you know, a that... through there was a through ball that Burton played about 70 minutes and Greaves made the an unbelievable interception just blocked it and then just kind of stood up calmly passed it on just yeah. he looks so calm as a as a player 
He does for his age. He, he will have rough patches. Oh, he, he will, will do, I'm sure. But I'm yet to see it, mate. He just yeah. he looks so assured on the ball. Yeah. There's the 40 yard pings he can make as well. <laughs> He's good to have out of your, out of your uh, defense. Prop, proper ball playing centre out. Yeah, it, it, it can spring you, particularly with wingers like what we've got, you know, where they can can use that space in behind. If you've got somebody that can play it out like that, you, you can catch teams on the break. Mm. Um, so there's that. Um, and then if we look ahead to the weekend, yep. um, game against Milton Keynes, Dons, Franchise FC. Franchise FC, fake Wimbledon. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it really does hurt me that, that they are that they got away with that. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I am pleased, by the way. I mean, Wimbledon are back at Plough Lane now, and that would yeah. be a brilliant away day if we don't yeah. got to do that. Because it looks good, that stadium. It's small, but it looks very nice. Mm, I will say yeah. that. Hopefully, hopefully. Proper Wimbledon. But fake yeah. Wimbledon, on the other hand, in the Milton Keynes bowl or whatever the fuck they call it. Yeah. Um, it's a step up from the hockey stadium, I'll tell you that. But, um, yeah, I, I might tell you a little bit about that uh, later. Um, <laughs> Look so forward four, to that. Four is the number of times that we've played uh, MK Dons in their storied history. Mm. Um, and to tempt fate slightly, we've never lost. I'm thinking back to Michelle Kuipers. No, was, the, was that Michelle against... Kuipers was in Division Three. No, but did we play MK Dons with them, or was it, or was that South End? I don't know. I've just got this massive South End. I th- South, was End. It South End. Yeah. Did he? Did, was it South End? He saved a penalty. Yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Um, he was he was on loan from Brighton. Yeah, I thought it was. Um, I thought it was against MK Dons, but maybe my memory uh, mem- my memory lets me down. Again. We've only we've only played them in two seasons, and and right. one one was the last time we were in League One. Yeah, it'll be a four or five then. Yeah, and and one game stands out in the memory particularly. Um, Stuart Green, two late goals mm. um, to to win it. Um, people had left the the KC that night yeah. really early. Yeah. I can remember the the kind of frustration that had built up all game, and then the catharsis, the relief of that yeah. um, Stuart Green winner. Like, I think it was in stoppage time. Yeah, um, ninety plus three. Yeah, winner yeah. half the stadium gone, and they hear the cheers, and they try to run back, and it's just like Three, you two. never leave your team, mate. Don't do it. Well, I, <laughs> I've, I've I've never left a game early in my life. I, I don't don't go in for it. No, um, but there was that, and then uh, same season where they were still playing at the National Hockey Stadium, um, and we went. It was a Tuesday night, and it snowed. <laughs> It was an open terrace. <laughs> Fucking hell. And my dad had took us out of school early <laughs> on a, a dentist appointment. To, yeah, dentist to go, in Milton Keynes. Yeah, to go and watch City. Uh, and we got there early and we were standing outside the, the away end and the steward outside was like, we think the game's off. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, the, the referee's just doing a pitch inspection. We thought the game was going to be called off. It was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, Can I get anyway, a key in it? Can I get a key? Yeah, <laughs> yeah will it take, if it'll take a key, it'll take a stud. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but that was an awful night as well. It was a terrible performance and Delroy Tracy rescued it. Yeah. Um, and then the next two times we played them was in our promotion season. Uh, 2015-16. Yeah. Uh, and I think we drew at home. I think Lucas scored. But the first time I've gone to the uh, MK Don's Arena or whatever it's called, uh, Stadium MK, whatever the hell it is. Franchise uh, ball. Yeah, uh, it's honestly one of the most solar stadiums. Oh, I bet. Um, and I know people say that about like bowl-style grounds anyway, but seriously, this place was... Um, it was horrendous. Does but it, it was ugh. it I was mean, an away day that I was looking forward to for this one. If we'd been allowed to go, because it was one of my favourite away days. Like last time we went, I'd just been made redundant out of my last job and, and we went down, me and my uncle, and we had a great day. We found a pub by a canal. Yeah, I've, I've heard other fans day. talk about, like, actually, the Milton K- like, uh, the MK Don's away day is a brilliant experience. I you... really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. And we won. Um I think it was Mo Diame scored after a brilliant piece of play from Sean Maloney. Um, Sean to, Maloney. To, nice. to put him in. 
yeah <laughs> yeah you forget about him don't you mm. um but yeah it's, you know you what's not to like you, you've got a pub by a canal where you can stand outside if the weather's nice enough have a pint and watch the narrow boats go by the walk up to the stadium from there takes you past the martial amps factory so you can buy yourself a martial amp if you oh, want that's right up your street mate <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and then you go to the football and you can watch city win uh hopefully so i was looking forward to it so We've played them four times, and then the final four mm. is the MK Dons are four unbeaten are in they? the league. Right. Yes. So, one yeah, of they've been doing, you... they drew against the AFC Wimbledon in the first game at Plough Lane, and then mm-hmm. that, there has been three since then. I think they've got, what, a draw and a couple of wins, have they? But they beat Sunderland. Beat Sunderland, yeah. Oh, they did, but that was their first away win in a long time, wasn't it? Yeah. Beat Sunderland, drew in Northampton away. Um, I mean, we can take out from that. I mean, if they may have just shit housed Northampton, I don't know what MK might, Dons might are done. like. They, they beat Wigan, obviously, who aren't great, no. and they manager at the minute. I think drew, as you say, with AFC Wimbledon. Yeah. Um, prior to that, they went on a great run, but four and beaten in the league. So that's my four for this week. Three lots of four. Nice. Um, just takes us on nicely to looking at the game at the weekend. Indeed. Um, a little ramble down memory lane along with it. Yeah, well, we always love that as a City fan. <laughs> um, talking of ramble down memory lane, memory lane, this is completely irrelevant to MK Don's game that we're going to talk about, but I saw a graphic earlier. There's a... <laughs> I'll have to send you it. Um, it's very funny, but it's... Um, you know the, that Twitter account, No Context Hull City, which is just random yes. things that just drop in? Well, it was our first game against Leicester City, in the 2016-17 Premier League season, and I'm just looking at it because there's, you know, in on Sky they have the lineups. Yeah. So this is how little a squad we had, <laughs> and there's a picture of Mike Phelan, who's got his arms folded, but his eyes are closed when they took the picture. It's absolutely brilliant. It looks like he's just fallen asleep waiting for the picture <laughs> to be taken. But you got the caretaker manager of Mike Phelan as the top graphic. Then there's Eldin Jakubovic in net, El Mahamedy, Livermore. Curtis and Robertson as a back four. Middle three, Huddleston, Klukas and Myler. And then Snodgrass one side, Hernandez through the middle, Diamande on the other, right? The substitutes bench. Do you remember who was on the substitutes bench that day? Because we only had like seven, eight proper professional players. I don't, if I'm honest. Goalkeeper, Kushek. Claxton. Who? Who? It's number twelve, and it's I can't even I, I can't even pronounce it. It's not Dusan Tadic, is it? No, no, Dusan. Wait, Dusan. It was, I think his first name was Dusan, but it was Kuchak. Kuchak. I don't know, but it's spelled K U C I A K. Um, obviously, Dusan Tadic. He's only the captain of Serbia and plays for Ajax. What am I on about? <laughs> Do you want me to edit that out? No, no, it's funny. <laughs> Brilliant. And then the other these were the other subs. Keep keep that bit in where I say what the fuck am I on about? <laughs> okay. Claxton, who's now playing for like Barton or someone or somebody. Josh Tyman, Greg Ollie, Sean Maloney, Greg Lua, and Jared Bowen. Right. So that was an interest and he didn't make a sub there, Phelan, if you remember that first game. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Obviously, it was the overhead bicycle kick one, but that was a random tweet that came up. But I just thought I'll send you that picture of my feeling. It's amazing. I remember. I, I think it was Kim Chat because he was the subkeeper for the playoff final uh, a few months before. Because McGregor was out injured. That's right. He, he was, was still out he injured. He was the third choice time. keeper. Yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, I remember him now. Now I'm looking at a picture of him. Yeah, but he, I don't think he played a game for us. Um, Competitive <laughs> anyway in the Premier he, or or the Championship. He may have played a cup game, but. Uh, played in the League Cup, apparently, yeah. to Exeter City. There you go. I mean, it's not... I mean, I know it's competitive. I think it was but... also... Was that not Jared Bowen's debut? Potentially. Number 29, Bowen, then, but he barely played that season. He was yeah. mainly with the 23s, because, obviously, we had then signed some players on loan. and Yeah, he had a couple of games under um, Marco Silva, I think. Yeah, yeah, he did. I'm sure he came on at Man United. Um, yeah, I think he did actually. Um, so, but yeah, that was that was another trip down memory lane. Um, if we <laughs> if we go to the uh, game this weekend, and then we actually got two away, well, three away games in a row. Um, we've got MK 
tomorrow or today, if you're listening to this, I'm sure. Ipswich in the week, and then it's FA Cup, isn't it? Week after. Mm. Um, so, what do we reckon for next couple of league games? I mean, the Ipswich ones are bigger because they're towards the top. It's but the start it's start of a very big run, isn't it? Yeah, very, very big run up until I think the week after Christmas. Mm. Uh, first, first game in New Year, I think, is when this kind of big run of fixtures kind of comes to an end. There's a little bit of a lull. A lull. Mm. We're, we're playing some big teams between now and the end of the year. Oh, because we've got Donny after the FA Cup game at home. Yeah, we've that's got been Sunderland moved. Coming up, got Sunderland on Boxing Day. Um, we've got Shrewsbury. We've also got. Portsmouth and we have Lincoln yeah um, they're all the December and then, games and then Charlton on the 2nd of January yep yep so there's some so it's, it crackers is a big, coming big up run. Mm. big run but it's important to start it off right with uh, MK Dons on Saturday yeah you know alright they've, they've had a mixed bag of a season so far haven't they they have Um where are they? 14th in the league. Like I say, won there, or not well, lost in the last Not four, lost in four, seven. yeah. yeah. Um, and not scoring a lot, but not conceding a great deal either. Mm. Um, you know, only, say only 14, but if, if they were better in front of goal, that would be enough to see them a little bit further up the table. I don't think you can take them lightly. Grant McCann, obviously, isn't he? he says he watched them a couple of times this season and been impressed with the way that they like to keep the ball and, and he said, like, they like to work teams around um, and they've got, you know, some experienced players in there. They've got Dean Lewington, who for some reason I absolutely can't stand. We've all got those players that we just can't stand there. <laughs> I mean, this, yeah. the, the list for, for me is, is fairly, you know, long, to say the <laughs> least. He's been somebody I've disliked for a long time and for the life of me, I couldn't tell you why. Um. Yeah, he's he's one of them that I really don't like. They've they've brought in Andrew Sermon this week, who was a, a decent player for Southampton, mm. never quite lived up to the promise that he was um, supposed to have. Yeah, whether or not he'll play on Saturday. Well, I mean, it depends who's injured, etc., and and everything else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the... and, and how up to speed he is with things. Dean Lewington's their captain, I see. He um, has. He's been their captain for a long, long time. Yeah. They've got, They've got Richard Keogh, who's another one that I Oh, God, stand. yeah. What a, what a prick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He he of poor decision-making after a drink. Yes, that lad. Um, yeah, and they've got Cameron yeah, the Jerome ser- as the well. Ser- the Sermon one's interesting that he signed for them. Um, yeah, Cameron Jerome, I've seen that, yeah. That's a uh, <laughs> blast from the past. Was he at Norwich last? No, he was at uh, Derby, wasn't he? Derby. And then he went to some team, where was it? Turkish team, I'm sure he did. I couldn't honestly tell you. I've not followed um, his career that closely. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna search, I'm gonna search it. Yeah. But yeah, they've got you know, all right, it's it's a very kind of top down approach to look at it and say they've got three players, four players who I know. Mm. Um, but they are an indication or it's an indication that they've got players with some some quality. Um, yeah. Right, there you go. Norwich, twenty eighteen you left, went to Derby. He went to Gertzteepi, Gertzteepi, in I'm Turkey. I'm pronouncing that. <laughs> uh, and then he signed for MK this season, and he's got three and eight. So, right. so he's not a bad strike rate. No, no, no. Not it's, terrible. It's, I mean, it's nearly one in two, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's I mean, not... what, I'd imagine McGuinness is on a similar. Um... Yeah, I think so. But the, I mean, I don't know how much Jerome does for the team because I don't watch him week in, week out. So. Uh. Um, they've got a, a loanee from Middlesbrough, Stephen Walker. I think he no played relation. against us last. No, no relation, I think. But um, and th- when I'm looking through the rest of their squad, I don't. I, w- I will say they're not massive names to me. Mm. Um, George, I don't will... think we. I, I don't think we can look past them and say that we're looking at the Ipswich game and, and we'll take this as a gimme. No, yeah. no, not at all. No, I mean they've got. Regan Poole plays, I think he's played for Wales um, a few times. So he's one of their defenders, the centre back. So he won't be a mug. Um, and he was at, he used to be at Man United, Regan Poole. So, I mean, they've got some good young players. I think, I think it will be a very tough test. I, you know, I don't want it. I, I think McCann is going to, um, he's not going to want 
the repeat of Swindon and Fleetwood, is he? He's, he's going to make sure that each game that we go into, it's one game at a time, as the old cliche says, but he's focused on how they've played and how they know they need to play against each team. Because I think it more now more than ever in League One, I think teams play such different styles. It seems that way. You're coming up against a different, a different just, challenge every week. That's a dartboard half the time, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you get Northampton who play three four three, but just put, just whack it. And then you've got you know people teams like Crew. You'd expect to be pushovers because they've just come up from League Two and actually they play some of the best football we've seen. Same with Plymouth. Plymouth played good football. There's some very good football in teams, but then you also have the awful shit houses as well, don't you? So <laughs> yeah. I'd expect it yeah. Milton Keynes to be in between, to be honest. I, I think they'll I mean, try the, and the, play it. But They finished 19th last season, so you're looking at them and you're thinking, well, they are maybe a team that we should be beating if we've got the ambitions of, of finishing up the top end of the table. So, you know, mm. that's that's maybe an indication of how I would expect it to go, but you can't, you, you, you just can't take it as a gimme. No. No, not at all. Um, the the Ipswich one worries me. It's huge, isn't it? Mm. I mean, it's huge. As, if we win that, as, that's great. And that's as big you know, as a game can be this early in the season. It, it feels pretty big. And why um, the why the fuck do they put a Tuesday night away game at Ipswich for the players when they've just travelled to MK? Are they going to stay over down south? Are they even allowed to do that? I wouldn't imagine so. I mean, I know the the EFL when fans at least were were able to attend, they purposefully put these longer trips on weeknights um, because the the kind of, I believe the thinking behind it is that fewer fans would be travelling because it's a a more difficult journey. Yeah. Yeah. So they think, well, we'll kind of protect the Saturday revenues of the bigger um, attendances. Yeah, I suppose suppose so. But then you've got like Donny's midweek. So that would have yeah. been one that you'd bank for a weekend if you were going by that. Maybe yeah. it just doesn't fit in with the fixtures, it's, I don't know. It's, but... it's never been an entirely consistent thing. And to me, they've got it kind of backwards. Because um, they're all over the shop city. They're going, what? They're going Milton Keynes with, tomorrow. Then they That's go, just the nature of it, though, because you look at switch, the spread of teams back, in this division. Back down we're all to over the place anyway. for FA Cup, aren't we? yeah. It's, we're just all over the place. It's going to be that way, I think, just because of the spread of, like, the geographical spread of teams in the league. Mm. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, they're third in the league. We'll see who have they got this weekend. Ipswich. Yes. Um, they have got Shrewsbury Town. Yeah. See, so they're at... they sh- they're at home as well. So yeah, you'd expect them to be. If you were doing an acker, you'd go with Ipswich. I think. Yeah, um, you probably would. You'd, so, I mean, they're what three to one, Shrewsbury to win. That's you know. Yeah, Shrewsbury twenty second. Haven't won in five at least. Yeah, I mean they they won, signed won Mark. All did you see they signed Mark Pitt? Shrewsbury. Yes, they did. Yeah, it was a very odd yeah. one that wasn't it? Yeah. Because I was I was thought well we we take him back we couldn't afford his wages then he's gone to Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury yeah, very odd. One. Unless they're doing yeah. all the budget on him, but. Anyway, <laughs> maybe they might seem as a great hope. Um, but yeah, but, but like back to Ipswich, our our records are really really similar, and mm. they've they've drawn one game, whereas we haven't. We've won that one game that they drew. Yeah, uh, we've scored eighteen. They've scored seventeen. We've both conceded nine, and there's only you know two points between us. Their form's been a little bit spotty though. Mm. Um, in in from what I can see of the form table, yeah, they've Donny won Donny did last another. three. Donny destroyed them about 4 1, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they've not won in the last three. All right, there's only one league game in there. Um, I don't know what teams they played against Crawley and Portsmouth in their respective cup competitions. But they yeah, lost to true. Sunderland. They lost to Sunderland. Um, before that, they won three on the spin. They've been up and down mm. um, recently, but obviously put on a very good run in the very early stages of the season to be where they are. So it does feel like a big game, you know, and, and we're quite early in the season for it to be feeling like a big one. But it's yeah, like, say, the, the first time we're coming up against a proper contender, it's like, all right, this is the one way you put a marker down and it can be like, will this set the tone for how we will compete well, against I think, the, I think it was the bigger Pete, teams? It was Peterborough, wasn't it? That was the first real kind of one like that. And we ended up 
fucking it up, really, because we didn't take our chances, did we? Um, don't think they were that much better than us at all, Peterborough, but obviously they won 2-1, uh-huh. and they're, they're a point ahead of us, but we've played one game less. Yeah. Um, they've played a game more, but we've played the same as Ipswich. So if, we, if, if us and Ipswich both win Saturday, and then it comes to our game with them, if we win, we go five points clear of them. So they, we, we're two points ahead of them, aren't we? So yeah, it's a, that's that's kind of big at, at this stage of the season. The kind of five point gaps, nice breathing room if we get that. Could be, it? yeah. But Chal- yeah. I mean, Charlton are on the same number of points as Ipswich, and they've played one less game. Yeah, ten games. <sighs> I mean, there's some it's... there's some teams on like nine games. Like Accrington Stanley had so many called off. Yeah. It's a big, big period of the season, this now. really is. Lincoln. We've got Portsmouth, you said, haven't we? We've got Portsmouth um, as well. Yeah, yeah, on the 19th. Lincoln, Portsmouth, Sunderland, Ipswich, Charlton, all coming up. Shrewsbury in the middle of that. And then, obviously, yeah. you've got the Papa John's Trophy game with Crew as well. That is 7th or the 8th of December. That'll be a midweek I know, game. I know, that, I know people are banging on about a trip to Wembley, but to me, you rest players for that. Oh, I'd play the same and, team that he did. I know. Like I'd rest players for the Stevenage Rimsby. game as well. Yeah, I would. I would, 100%. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, huge week. Really so looking forward to it. It is a big week. Um, did we have AOB? I was just going to talk about one person in particular. The only thing I wanted to mention was the um, the change of subs. Oh, the five subs rule. Really. Yeah, I was going to ask you yeah. about that because you're not a fan, are yeah. you? Or are you now? As a long term thing, no, I'm not. Um, I think particularly, I've got two hats on, right? So from <laughs> we'll take one as of them fo- off, bloody greedy. Timmy uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. um, So as a football fan, I think it's a bad thing for the game because I think it concentrates more power in the hands of bigger teams with bigger budgets who can afford to stockpile players of better quality. Said, and if they can bring yeah. five on at any one time, I think that skews things in game. I think if I think more than is fair. Particularly in the Premier League, if you have somebody like uh I don't know Fulham and they play West uh, they play they play Man City and they have like yeah. Jesus Whoever else on the bench, and they bring four or five, and they and say if it's one one, and it's just like, oh, the what the fuck? They've got like two hundred million on bench, and we've got a load of young kids. It, yeah, it, it, championship players. Yeah, and... it does skew it. It does skew yeah. it. I do see that. So that's that's one concern. I don't like it from that point of view. However, mm. I think it works quite nicely for us this season because we have a very deep squad, and we have a. But we need players with, to get game time as well. Yeah, don't we? Yeah, we've we've got a deep squad and we've got a larger budget than a lot of teams in in this this league. And my biggest interest is that we are promoted out of this division at the earliest possible opportunity. So for as many reasons as I don't like it being a general football fan, for a short term fix, love, it's good. For a short for a short term fix, I bloody love it being a City fan. Yeah. you can call me a hypocrite. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, do a fuck. Win, lose, or draw. <laughs> Don't give a fuck. <laughs> we are all city and we're going up with five subs. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with everything you just said about that. I think in the Premier League, it's more distorted anyway. Um, not, yeah. not that I particularly give a fuck about the Premier League in, in many respects, yeah. but... Not at the moment. Not at the I'll moment. tell you who it doesn't help. It doesn't bloody help Wickham. <laughs> I mean, they've they they don't even deserve to be in the championship because they finished uh, they fucking don't, you can't. on the points per game. They jumped up three places. What the fuck? They hadn't. Yeah. They were in bad form. They hadn't played those games. They had the games in hand, but they wouldn't have won them. And they managed so to shit house the way to, into the championship. They're gonna finish bottom anyway. So they're on whatever weird merit you want to ascribe to them. There's no, there's no merit that the chair boys. I mean, what fucking word is that? Like <laughs> the chair boys. Fuck Wickham, man. <laughs> Fuck Wickham. <laughs> I'm sure I won't be the only only City fan who says fuck Wickham. Um, but yeah, I mean, the other thing that I was I would be very surprised if very many City fans actually care that much about <laughs> Wickham. I don't like being a league below them. I'll say that. But that's what I mean. You know. That was that's the biggest <laughs> indignation, really, that we're a league yeah. below fucking Wickham Wanderers. Um, but it, the other thing I was going to talk about was Martin Samuelson. 
Um, mm-hmm. I thought... Finally, we get to him. Yeah. Um, listen, I was very impressed with him against Grimsby. Apart from the first maybe opening 20, 25 minutes until he scored his goal. I thought it was quiet. Um, because he was out on the right. I don't think he got a lot of the ball. I think it shows that he's better centrally, in my opinion. Um, but he took his first goal really well. What a finish oh, that was. Didn't he? Yeah. Um, and obviously it was good work from Eves and then Slater to set him up and they just backed off him. They thought, oh, he can't shoot this cunt. We'll just let him. And then he t- picked out the top corner and it's like, well, get in. Um, right yeah, place at the right really time. Was. Right place at the right time for second as well. Um, and it was, a, it was a fantastic finish that first one, wasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> I, Just the way he cut in on his left foot. Yeah. Top corner. I mean, he didn't even have to look, did he? No. Just stroked it there. It was brilliant. It was a great finish. And the thing that I put, I was torn about putting him as the good, but I thought Wilkes deserved it more, to mention. Mm-hmm. I think that the... Obviously, last week I talked about the Samuelson loving doing my head in a little bit because yeah. I thought people were like overlording him. But I certainly do think he deserved the plaudits against Grimsby. I thought it was excellent. But there's also that bit in my head that just thinks there are parts of his game that's still not good enough. And he's got the chance to get his first hat trick in professional football and he does that for a penalty. Like. The best players in the world take bad penalties. I know they do. I know they do. But... Extreme example, Messi is a poor penalty taker. Well, he usually just chips it down the middle. So if you stay st- stay still, you catch the fucker. <laughs> um, I never understand. All right, all right. Let's. I never you know, understand the, why the, players the best... don't just fucking boot it as hard as they can in the bottom corner, where the ref, uh, the the goalkeeper probably can't get to it, even if he does get a hand to it. Julian Dick springs to mind from the nineties. We just should take a 40 yard run oh, up yeah. and tank the cunt right in the top corner. He never missed a penalty. Graham finally. Alexander used to take a very good penalty, annoyingly, for Burnley. Yeah. yeah um, fucker. Um, but, you know, the, the, the best player in Hull City's history took a poor penalty. I mean, we all remember Stephen McPhee lobbing that one against the bar. <laughs> <laughs> <It's Cardiff>. Duh. <laughs> At least his follow-up wasn't an attempt at a scorpion kick. You've got to give Samuelson that. Yeah, he could try and edit. I mean, it was. Yeah, I mean, he got his follow-up on target. I saw on the commentary <laughs> that it had said that it was a good, like no, this wasn't the commentary, obviously that City fans have listened to, but it was like on the text thing. You know, when you get the Sky app updates, good save by Kim. It's what a fucking good save. It was a fucking shit penalty, and that's what annoys me a little bit about Samuel Sinner. For all it, he was very good. I don't want to. I don't want to have a go at him. He was a very. He scored a superb goal, probably one of the best he'll score in his career, uh, perhaps especially the early part of his career. But there was just that lack of killer instinct. He could have had five or six, mate. He could have had five or six that game. He really could have done the amount. The positions he was getting in was excellent, and there was a good save by the keeper on one of them. I think he passed when he actually could have scored himself on a couple of occasions. And I just want to see him just proper go for it. Like he was that first, you know, between 20, 30 minutes where he scored his two goals. He looked like he was could have scored four or five. And I wish he had done because I thought there was all the, the Grimsby were there for the taking. And I, I wanted him to just get more and more confidence from it. And I just worry how much that penalty has knocked his head a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure he will. I think he, you know, footballers themselves will know that penalties. It's it's there's a there's a certain amount of um, randomness. Is that a word? Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, there's a certain amount of chance to take in a penalty. I don't think he'll that'll bother him all that much. Probably not. Um, but... Yeah, and and in the same way that um, you said McCann was getting into. Eves after the Burton game mm. telling him to keep his head up and yeah. not let the chances that he passed up affect him. I think they'll have done the same to Samuelson. I think he's had a very positive couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's the bigger picture for me. Um, there's, there are signs that there's a player there and, and before before these last couple of games in, in the, um, the Papa John's Mega Cup. Um, <laughs> we, we didn't think we had that so, I mean, the only thing that Papa John's needs to do with their mega cup is to hold the hold the uh, final at the uh, the franchise bowl in Milton Keynes, and then it'd be the perfect competition, wouldn't it? 
I just want them to not actually present a trophy, but to give the winning team an empty pizza box. That'd be class. And, and just have them hold that aloft, you know, at Wembley. I think, um, I think if but, you buy this... But they have to make sure, they have to make sure if they're giving teams a pizza box that they put that little pot of garlic sauce in the corner. Oh, it's got, it's got, to, it's got to be. It's got to be gone. <laughs> I personally think you should get, like, you know, when you order the stream for the next round of 32 and you watch City versus, like, crew or whatever... You get you, you get, get a voucher. You code. get a voucher code for a free pizza, like whether it's a little one or that, whatever. That'd be nice. Marketing yeah. ploy. Come on, Papa John's. I'll at you in the fucking episode, and you can get it out there. You'll get an absolute killing, and everybody will love the competition because you get free pizza out of it. Yeah, I'm having Domino's tomorrow night anyway. <laughs> 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 nicer <laughs> to be fair i'm not going to disagree with you i think it is the better pizza why are we talking about what the better pizza is on a fucking city podcast that's that's the afl trophy baby that's it <laughs> i think we're i think we're done for chat that was a yeah i think we're weird, done. Yeah. weird way to finish but um we've, we've reached a weird point my, good enjoyable chat anyway love that um yeah cheers good one um same time next week, I guess. Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, we'll we'll get it out sorted before the uh, FA Cup and reaction yeah, to the next two games. We're all missing yeah, out on right, it. Just hopefully, vaccine is up and everything else, but I still can't see it being until next season. But I hope I'm just being pessimistic. No, um, but yeah, obviously next next couple of games, big ones, uh, Forza. Sports Tigers. Tigers. I'll speak to you soon. Take it easy. Take it easy.